live from Hickory. It's country-ish. Alan! Get the country boy. And he's making it good. He was Jaws under dog dressed in beer rolls, living next to the wood. He liked to eat the sushi, but he don't even fish. Not so much a country boy, it's more like he's country ish. Moved out of his green and headed for Southern Cal. Wound up in TV and film, making popsicle proud. Now this country boy is back with his family. Got himself a podcast, he knows it'll last, cause he's in Hickory. That is right. I am from Hickory. Applause button anytime now. Yay! What up, Bumpkins? It's Tuesday, April the 26th, and we have a trailer trashy, big crappy, nasty show for you today. I'm giving more money away look at this i got more residual checks for y'all call in later if you want a chance to win one uh larry the cable guy is gonna uh check back in with us and two of my comedian friends from los angeles vicky barbalak and sean polofsky from a new podcast called trailer park diaries they're gonna be zooming in in best trends we got elon musk buying twitter Mike Tyson beating up a, a loser on a plane. Uh, and in small town news, a woman had to be rescued after falling into an outhouse toilet trying to retrieve her phone. It's a real shit show tonight. Kind of like the Johnny Depp uh, Amber Heard trial. That's right. And uh, I got my co-host, uh, Mark Hunt, sitting right here. How you doing, buddy? Jonathan Reap. Good to see you. Good to see you. What's your, uh, I was going to say Jonathan and then your middle name, Reap. But I- David. After your daddy. Yep. I Jonathan known that. David Rupp. Jonathan David Rupp. Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Uh, we're live, everybody. We got two interns sitting over here. I got Elliot, the intern, and intern Sergeant Mark. Have a ball. Uh, one of them's checking your Facebook comments. One of them's checking your YouTube comments. Leave us a uh, comment, and we'll try and read it on the show. In fact, I'll ask you a question. Have you ever dropped your phone in the toilet? Let me know in the comments section, one of these guys, if it's funny or interesting, and uh, we'll read it on the show, give you a old shout out. Um, and to prove that I do that, I'm going to read comments from last week, in case I don't get to yours today. I read ones from last week. Have you ever given, the question was, have you ever given an inappropriate gift to someone? Um, some of you answered it, some of you didn't. Eddie Weber said, by the way, oh, that's, yeah. So he didn't answer that question, but he said, by the way, I'm not... <laughs> There we go. Jeff, back. What does it mean when there's two dots over the A? Is it bake? Um, have a ball. You, you know some German stuff. Is this a German thing here? Why do we have two dots over the A, and how do you do that? If memory serves me correct, I think it's called an umlaut. But, uh, umlaut? Yeah, but I can't remember exactly uh, how, how that transpires as yeah. far as how it breaks down. I'm just going to say Jeff, back. He says, once have a friend... <laughs> I'm going to read it like he wrote it. Now, this is what, and maybe there's some uh, you know, lost in translation here, but I'm going to read the words that he wrote. Once have a friend a flashlight for a present. Was a very, very weird experience. Ha <laughs> ha. Didn't really get the response near expectations. Yes. Yeah, he's, um, not, he's not around here. No. But uh, it's funny. Yeah, you, uh, he gave a flashlight to someone. Probably, uh, you know, maybe you gotta, you got to do that in the right setting you know you, you can't be doing that like at a church function you know those are gifts for yeah but i wish you had that recorded i'd like to see his response and thanks for the comment jeff all right what's the other one ravencroft she said i got stuck in a john reap's nightmare once i got out by waking up he 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 jk listen here ravencroft if I was in your dream, it wasn't a damn nightmare. It's a damn fantasy, and you're welcome. I love you, Jody. Next one. 
Uh, Eddie Weber, he says, by the way, I'm not sure if I had mentioned it yet, but we have, a, we have actually stopped doing repossessions after a conversation had brought up somewhat in part of learning about Sue the Collector. I remember that. Yeah, so sorry if that uh, ruined the business, Eddie, but I don't want you getting sued by one of our sponsors, Sue the Collector. Well, I believe shots were fired is why they quit. <laughs> yeah, they quit right. repoing because I think the guy he worked with got shot. That's right. So they said, enough of that. We're yeah. just going to stick to uh, hauling cars. Yeah, that's probably safer, Eddie. Um, well, thanks for the comment, everybody. Listen, if you want to help the podcast, because you know, we're not just live on Facebook and YouTube. We're a regular old podcast for your ear holes. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, iHeart, Radio, Stitcher, Podbean, you name it, we're on it. And we have, um, if you, if you want to help us and you have no money, what you could do is write us a nice review on Apple Podcasts to give us five stars, <laughs> and we'll read it on the show. Give you a shout out. Give the old toot of the air horn. So, uh, uh, Elliot, yes, sir. Do we have a new Apple Podcast review? Actually, we do, and this is from Mango Slot, and they what? Said, Mango, Mango Slot. Slot. Mm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely a great show. Came across this podcast accidentally during an extended stay in the hospital. It made me laugh out loud, brought brightness to my time there, and helped me get beyond what was going on, and have been watching ever since. Thank you, guys. Absolutely love the show. You bring light and laughs to this dark time. Oh. And that's exactly what we do. Wow. That's nice. Very sentimental. Mm -hmm. Deep. Thank you. Give me the old two to the air horn. Thank you, Mango Slot. There you go. All righty. Um, what else? Well, this would be that time where I would beg you to hit the share button. That's one way we grow. You know, you can write pod, you can write nice reviews, give us five stars. You can hit the share button. And, uh, you know, at the top of the show, the intro, it's all about, you know, the countdown. I'm trying to get you to share, 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 share. So I'm reminding you right now, hit the share button. Uh, sometimes... If you're new, like this is the, one of the first times you've watched the podcast, welcome. If you're in Tulsa, hello. This is one of the podcasts I was telling you about. Um, I do a thing called the share stare, but I don't do it anymore unless the people demand it. Last week I said if we get to 500 stars on Facebook, I'd do it. And we didn't get there till the very end of the show. This week, 600. <laughs> If we make it to 600 stars, I will do the share stare at the end of the show. And basically, that's me putting on a stupid share wig, and I look right down the barrel of this camera, and I do the share stare as I'm begging you to share. I sing a share song. It's really dumb, but some people like it. Uh, but put your money where your mouth is. Hit them stars. Maybe I'll do it. Let's plug some tour dates, baby. Um, this weekend, I'm going to be in Syracuse, New York at the Funny Bone Comedy Club. Come see me there. Uh, April 29th and 30th, two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Then the next stop, May the 6th and 7th, Toledo, Ohio at the Perrysburg Funny Bone. Come see me there. Then after that, May 20th, Sharpsburg, Kentucky at the Barnyard with Larry the Cable Guy. Come see both of us. He'll be on the show here in a little bit, so... All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Marcus, how are you? I'm okay. How was your week? It was fine. Uh, <clears throat> went to was I had uh, plans to go to the Hickory. So every year Hickory has a hops festival where you can go try all these different beers and you pay right fifty bucks and uh, plan on going to that Hickory hops. Hickory hops. Uh, didn't go in. Didn't make it inside. Sit outside. Why not? A, Why didn't you go in? I just didn't want to. Decided I didn't want to pay the fifty bucks. Fifty. So bucks. I sat outside of the. Uh, bar there and and had their beer <laughs> and you watched and probably people. still spent 50 bucks you think <laughs> probably. yeah <laughs> probably interesting did that went on a little hike sunday i put our we've got a local mountain here called uh baker's, baker's mountain. mountain yeah it's looking beautiful right it now. it is pretty so you can so you hike green. to the top of that you can look down on the town mm -hmm. of hickory if you look uh yeah just right and the weather's good it is but, technically a mountain like it is like whatever the requirement height requirement to be a mountain and not like a hill or foothill it's a mountain it's just barely a mountain it's the smallest mountain i think <laughs> yeah it's uh, but hey it's ours and we love it it's right? the highest peak this side of the uh, uh catawba river something like or that. something i was in tulsa oklahoma had a good time uh at the tulsa, tulsa comedy club so if you were there this weekend and you saw me thank you uh this is what i was talking about 
a uh, couple things. You know, I'm doing no drinko to cinco. Yeah. Haven't had one drop of alcohol uh, since April second or third. Remember that playoff, that, that championship basketball game. You have was. cleaned out. Cleaned out, but I was this close. You were this tempted. Weekend. Oh, more the than the devil tempted. was uh, mm-hmm. waving. Well, this venue, um, it's new, and they, they basically took an old movie theater that had different theaters in it, like a big six theater type place, and just revamped it into one. One of them's a comedy club. One's a big dance place. Oh, wow. One is like a just a smoking lounge. So it was a lot of party people coming in and out. Everybody a good drinking. Time. The owner was like. Anywhere you want to go in this town, I got you, blah, blah, blah. When's your flight leave? We're going to have a good time. And and then someone handed me a drink, and I'm holding in my hand my favorite, like, sugar-free Red Bull vodka drink. And you never sipped it. You never sipped it. I had it right here. I started to think. I even texted Jody. I said, I think I'm out. Yeah. I think I'm tapping out. I think I'm tapping out this weekend. She's like, okay, well, you want to make sure. She's supportive. But I had it in my hand, and it was, like, right here a couple times, and I'm like, well, maybe after this show, I'll get back to it. I put the drink down, did first show, came back, picked it back up. Same drink. The ice had already melted, but yeah. I just picked it back up, holding it in my hand. I put it down my merch table, sold some stuff, and I picked it back up, walked around with it some more, and I finally was like, ah, and I resisted. I was this close, man. Being a poser. Yeah. So you're acting like you were drinking, having a good time, but never I, wanted, I mean, I, don't, I think I was just had it in my hand like, I'm going to do it, and I just didn't get around to it. Oh, so it's lucky. You're just busy. You got yeah. too busy to drink. Anyway, I'm still uh, dry as a bone. No drinko to Cinco de Mayo. If you want to do that little journey with me, it's real simple. Just don't drink till May the 5th. You know, I figure once once a year for one month, I'm just going to do this. I think it's a good thing. When you turn 50, it's a good thing for your body. Um, so thank you, Tulsa. Uh, also, this weekend, I'm going to be in Syracuse, but there is an event going on in Hickory, and my boys will be here. I'm talking the country-ish squad will be going to the Hickory Expo. The uh, It's called the Carolinas Cannabis Conference and Expo. We're going to have a booth. You can come by, and, uh, you know, uh, our sponsors, our good friends at Alpine's Hemp Company will be there along with everybody else who loves CBD and hemp, and they're trying to raise awareness for the industry and all this stuff. It's going to be fun, lots of stuff to do. Go to carolinascannabisbusiness.com for all the details. We're going to have a booth there. Um, so if you want to meet the squad, the country-ish squad, and maybe get a hat or a T-shirt, I'll have my hot sauce there. God, we'll good. have koozies, all kinds of good stuff. Come by and say hey to Elliot or Mark Ball or maybe Mark or I think Sean and maybe uh, Isaiah might come. So yeah, We will not be giving out cannabis. No, we're not but, doing anything with cannabis. No. We're just there – Supporting Hickory and our friends at Alpine's Hemp. But if you want to bring some by the booth, I feel more than welcome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Also, uh, if you want to be a part of Country-ish After Dark, once a month we do a show just for our Patreon supporters. Go to countryish.com, click on support, join at the $5 level, and that will get you into the next Country-ish Raw After Dark, whatever. That's May the 17th at 9.30. It's a Tuesday night. And um, we're gonna we basically we talk one on one with the Patreons. We're gonna pick like three people I think at random, have them zoom into the show, really get into it. And uh, I will be drinking then because that's May. We'll have a good time. We'll have some edibles. It, it we get loose. Uh, also, we're going cruising again, um, November five through 11, 2023. The newest ship is called Wonder of the Seas. Uh, that's selling out of. Uh, Port Canaveral, November the 5th, and it's uh, seven days this time. We're going to Coco Cay, Cozumel, Mexico, Roatan, Honduras, Costa Maya, Mexico. But it ain't just me. It's two other good comedians, John Heffern and Reno Collier. We're going to Mexico. We're going to see amigos. Go to johnreap.com, click on cruise for that info, and get yourself a cabin. Let's get on to the first segment. We've got a full show. i got residual checks. we got people zooming in. And we got a crazy small town news story, but let's get to the first segment right here. What I do is I go to Twitter, you see. Mm-hmm. I click on your hashtag. I find what it is people are talking about, and then I weigh in on that topic. Yeah, it's how you know we're current. 
We're in the know. We're with the Joneses. It's a segment called, Ooh, it's the best trends. Here's what you're talking about. Brought to you by Hendrick Honda Hickory. Are you in the market for a new vehicle? How about a used vehicle? Check out Hendrick Honda Hickory. Get yourself a vehicle. Go get a hot dog, too. Tell them John Reap sent you. Here we go. Hashtag Elon Musk buys Twitter for $44 billion. Wowzers. What do y'all think of that? Um, People are, like, loving it. Some people are hating it. It's very political. There's people on the left are like, blasphemy. He's going to ruin it. People on the right, free speech is back. Very decisive right now. Um, and it, when I last I checked, I don't know what's going on with the algorithm, but I just gained like a thousand followers like that. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, everybody. Let's have fun with this. Um, what are your thoughts, Marcus? I've never even really messed with Twitter. I know you. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the man can buy anything he wants, obviously. He's he, the richest he, man on the planet. He owns planet. space too, right? And he owns he space. owns all, he owns outer space. Yep. He owns. Yeah. Uh, well, him and uh, uh, the other guy from Amazon, they share it. Oh, they Bezos. share it. Bezos. 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 Yeah, they share it. But yeah, they they co-own outer space. So maybe he'll go and after electric cars. Yeah, maybe he'll go after Facebook next. Yeah, I'm interested to see what's going to happen because you know Twitter kicked off a lot of uh, Trump people. Kicked off Trump. Yeah. Kicked off Tucker Carlson. And then just recently I saw, because I follow all this stuff, I'm I'm in the know. He's back. He said, I'm back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that happened immediately, yeah. which I, I find hilarious. So it's going to be fun to watch. I'd like to know what your thoughts are on this. Uh, and Alan Jackson, I would actually like to like, like to know your thoughts on this as well. My thoughts on... On Elon what? Musk buying Twitter. Is uh, this good? Is it bad? Is it neither? I, I think it's. I mean, I don't think anything's going to change. You right. Know. My question is, I'm I'm just still curious how he's going to make money from it because Twitter hasn't really been making money <laughs> to was, begin with. Yeah, yeah. I was and now he's putting forty four billion dollars into it. That's uh, yeah, that's a lot of money to have to make up. So. You know. Yep, it is. The stock did go up a little bit. I think. Okay. All right. So maybe it was a pretty good deal. I maybe. Don't know. I mean, who knows in the long run what's going to happen. It's out of my price range. I hadn't really (laughs) thought about it. Yeah. There were a lot of people giving him shit because they're like, well, for $44 billion, you could have ended world hunger. But instead, you bought (laughs) a failing. Yeah. Yeah. uh, But I mean, he made his money. He made it. It's his money he made. Yeah, that's how I feel. He can kind of spend it how he wants to. If he wants to buy Twitter, let him buy Twitter. Yeah. You know? I tweeted out, like, for 99.99% of you on Twitter, this is neither a victory or a loss. Your life will not change one bit. Nope. Right. Yep. That's how I feel. But it'll be fun to watch. Stay tuned for that. Also, hashtag Mike Tyson on a plane. Did you see this, Marcus? I saw it. You know, and a man can't take so much shit. <laughs> I mean, after a while. I, was, I watched this video, and I'm like, Go Mike Tyson. Yeah, I, I've wanted to beat the crap out of that guy. I've wanted to do that to many people. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you get. You probably get a little bit of that. Not to his degree. No, not but, like that. But you this probably, guy was. I'll, I'll read. In case you don't know what happened, the incident all went down around 10:30 p.m. Mike Tyson was slated to fly out of San Francisco to Florida. A witness on the plane says he and his friend were boarding Tyson's flight. The boxing legend was initially cool with them and the other passengers. And the witness tells everybody that Mike took a selfie with him. And then he was patient with this overly excited buddy who kept trying to talk to the 55-year-old fighter as he sat behind him. Uh, Eventually, though, uh, we were told Tyson had enough of this guy behind him talking in his ear and told the dude to chill out. Uh, When the guy didn't, well, that's when... uh, uh, Tyson started to throw several punches in the man's face. Let's watch this video. Uh, I, I kind of love this. This is from TMZ Sports. This is George talking to Mike Tyson, bro. This shit crazy, bro. Mike Tyson. First class. This is Jet Blue. He's right in his He'll be around with Tyson. Tyson's Mike Tyson's already trying to give us some taking shrooms. a picture. I heard the guy threw water at him, too. <laughs> you don't know how to act. Tyson looking And this out, guy's man. not That's shutting up. I heard he was drunk, too. Never gave you. Yeah. And this is after. 
<laughs> oh no, maybe not. Jeff this Blue, is after. Mid flight. His head. Look at his. Got beat up by Mike Tyson. <laughs> Turn that way. Yeah, he got fucked up. I mean, it's, it's pretty. Scary. That face he's making is pretty happen. funny, but yeah. Apparently, this guy has been in trouble before. Um, yeah. He's been arrested. Trying to be funny, trying to stuff. show off, and then that's what you get. I mean, you don't go into a bear cave and start poking a bear. This uh, is Mike Tyson. This, what did you think would happen? He's lucky he got out there with his ear. One hundred percent. Oh, thank you. There we go. See, oh, yeah, Mark, I, got I don't own the ball. Well, I'm on the side of Mike Tyson. Now it's never, you know, you, you know, because some people are going to say, "Well, John, you were against hitting when uh, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. It's Why different. are you for hitting now?" This is two way different things, and you should know that. That's a dumb question. How dare you? Um, all right, let's. Um, oh yeah, let's move on. We got some irrational national holidays. I love these because they're so stupid sometimes. Very. Um, it's National Kids and Pets Day. It's National Autobahn Day. Uh, have you been on the Autobahn um, ball in Germany? I've been on the Autobahn, but Autobahn is a totally separate thing. Oh, I'm, so I'm not reading that right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what is that? I swear I'm not joking right now. It's I thought birds, that was Autobahn and... from Germany. No, Click on not... that. What is that? Give me one second. Okay, well. It says, <laughs> honors the birth of John James Autobahn. And it says Autobahn was a French-American ornithologist. So he was the guy to study birds and Okay, has I nothing to do with the road. <laughs> <laughs> but Somebody did I'm so research. happy I did not look it up first. Because yeah. look at this funny moment. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good job. But I do like the Autobahn better. Yeah, 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 yeah. I That'll be a different day. I might be going to Germany because um, my fiance Jody got a uh, – she's going to Germany for some training. And uh, I'm going to go with some of the trip. And it uh, should be interesting. I – I'd like to get on that Autobahn and have some German beer. Good times. Uh, it's National Help a Horse Day, National Richter Scale Day, National Dissertation Day, South Dakota Day, whoop de doo and it's National Pretzel Day. Now, here's the thing. I put this up on Twitter earlier today, and I stand by it. Hard, tiny, the pretzels you get on airplanes, that's complete trash. Garbage. No, thank you. I don't need pretzels. All you like is the salt. If you... If I gave you a bag of pretzels that had no salt on it, you'd be like, this is nasty. No, it's, thank you. It's flour. It's just a breadstick. It's flour and water. Yeah. Now, you want to go soft pretzel? Big, soft pretzel right out the oven with some salt and mustard? That's okay. That's mediocre at best. Now, you want to go hot dog in a pretzel? Like from Aunt, Aunt Annie's or Aunt Annie's, however you want to say it. Pretzel bun? Pretty good. Yeah. But that's because there's a hot dog in it. Pretzel by itself, dumb. Pretty tasteless. Fight me. No, I can't. That's, yeah. You're right. It's, it's <laughs> nothing there. Yeah. But a lot of people got mad about that. It's also National Hemi Day. What Hemi? is that? What? I have no idea what that is. You would think you would know what a Hemi is. Is that like Hemi Roy? <clears throat> Preparation H? Maybe. Yeah. No, I don't Is that it Hemi is. or Hemi? <laughs> Good question. There's an I at the end of it. Yeah, so you, you might say it the way it's spelled. Yeah. Well, so happy National Hemi Day, everybody. I didn't invent a damn thing, but I did put it on the map, didn't I? You did sure did. <laughs> or did it put you on one? Hello, it did. Yeah, yeah. 100%. All righty. Well, we got a lot of show to get to. Um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? Let me read this real quick. I forgot to put this. It's okay. Since we're doing that fake national days, and there's tons of them, I'm going to go ahead and say that from now on, moving forward, April 25 and 26 will forever be known as National John Reap Days. There's two of them. Now, how do you celebrate? Real simple. You can watch Harold and Kumar escape Guantanamo Bay because yesterday was the 14th year anniversary of that release date. And today is National Hemi Day. I have to do with both National John Reap Day. Um, all right, we got a lot of show to do. I'm excited. Uh, what what's next? We've got oh yes. So I'm doing a, a gig, April. I'm sorry, May the twentieth in Sharpsburg, Kentucky, with the one, the only Larry the Cable Guy, and uh, we had him on the show uh, last week. It's a long interview. We chopped him up in the five minute little chunks. So enjoy this new chunk. 
with me and Larry the Cable Guy talking about his Remain Seated tour and what tour looks like for him now. Enjoy. We'll be right back. I want to ask you something about your, 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 your comedy tour right now. You're calling it Remain Seated Tour. Where did that right. where did that come from? Is that because when you walk out, people stand up and start clapping? No, I always said stems from back in the day. Um, I they used to call me the freight train of comedy because yeah. I did one liners and I'd always fight for stage time. And Colleen at Magar at the uh, comedy corner who ran it, she'd give me every now and then. We you know we were there to open for for open for people, so we. Who's going to open for this guy? Who's going to open? You get Tuesday night. You can open Thursday night. That kind of thing. There was like five of us in the stable. There four of us. So if I'd get, if we weren't going to use an opener that night, at the last minute, she would come up and, okay, you got four minutes. So I'd run up, boom, 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 boom. And it was just, it was just a stupid throwaway after a certain joke. You know, I would say a dumb joke and then I'd go, thank you. Remain seated. Remain seated. <laughs> yeah. Don't get up for that. You know, yeah. just that kind of a stupid thing. You know, it's, it'd be like after a joke where it's like, uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not saying uh, uh, I'm not saying she was big, but her uh, but her uh, but her corsage was a personal pan pizza. Please remain seated. <laughs> yeah. I that's dog. funny. I love it. I do a thing now because I just turned fifty, and I live with my mom. Uh, so I tell people, you know, ladies, I don't want to get you excited, but you're looking at a fifty year old man who lives with his mother, and I say, please do not rush the stage. We have fire codes. <laughs> Sit down. Yes. So I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. That's exactly. So that's what I do in my act of back in the day. And so I just brought it back as kind of a pretty cool thing because I always, because at the comedy corner, anytime a joke would, after that started, anytime there was a joke, you'd hear somebody in the back go, Remain Shannon. <laughs> uh, there, was another, there was another guy, uh, Dave, uh, David, uh, Dave Miller. Yeah. Was, Kid Dave Miller. Kid. No, it's a different Dave Miller, not Kid Dave. Oh, different really? Dave <laughs> okay. From Fort Lauderdale. Okay. And he'd get up there and he'd go, yes, I am my sister. And I said, well, he talks like that. And he'd go, thank you. Thank you, sir. Remain seated, please. Remain seated. <laughs> you know, so we were all doing this. Remain seated. Yeah, Goofy, yeah. stupid stuff because we love that. So that's what it stemmed from. So I just called it Remain Seated. Yeah, of course. Well, that's great, man. I'm excited to see it. I haven't actually seen you live in person do stand-up. I mean, I've we've hung out in Nashville, uh, uh, that kind of stuff. But I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Well, let me tell you, I it's fun. I just love making people laugh. I love doing stand-up. I I love I just love the one-liners. I I love watching a joke work. I love my favorite part of stand-up is. Having your set act, you know you're going to do, but my favorite part is just creating on stage because I get so into the character. I get so into what I'm doing mm -hmm. that it may, it literally, I make myself laugh hysterically <laughs> where I couldn't stop laughing. And then, and then it, it's awesome because uh, then I can look at the crowd and I, whenever I do that, I'll look at the crowd and go, oh man. I'm so sorry, folks. I'm hearing a lot of this for the first time myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And just those, th I think a lot of times the throwaways are funnier than the actual jokes. Oh yeah. But I just love it so much. It's fun to do. I will say I don't do as many dates anymore. You know, I took this date cause you're on it. I want to hang out with you. And I like, I like working these kinds of places. They're a lot of fun, but in all seriousness, Johnny, I'm all, I only do, this is a, a extraordinary year for me cause it's a lot of makeup dates from back in the day. All right, Larry the Cable Guy, everybody. Come see us in Sharpsburg, May the 20th. Hey, let me, let me holler at you a minute. Credit cards, student loans, mortgages, car loans, hospital bills. Did you know you have a lot of rights if any of these ever go to debt collections? That's right. Consumers, not debt collectors, have a huge list of rules that they have to abide by, and that is where the law firm at suethecollector.com comes in. SueTheCollector.com is a national consumer law firm that only helps consumers. The lawyers at Sue the Collector have helped literally thousands of people turn the tables on debt collectors and put an end to the illegal harassment, abuse, and repeated phone calls that many people find themselves subjected to through no fault of their own. The lawyers at Sue the Collector can help everyone in all 50 states. 
They've won millions for consumers over the years and have canceled over $1 billion in consumer-related debts. That's right, a billion. Right now, they really want to speak to anyone that's had their car repossessed. Did you know consumers do not have to allow repo men to take their cars against their will? In most cases, you can actually legally refuse to let them take your car. If you've ever been sub uh, objected to a car repo and they still got your car against your will, you may be sitting on a very valuable case. Call us through the collector's office right now at 1-877-BAD-REPO or 1-877-223-7376. Again, that's 1-877-BAD-REPO or 1-877-223-7376. They're open right now to take your call. Again, that is 1-877-BAD-REPO. Elliot. Yes, sir. Did you have something to say about this? Well, Eddie Weber said that he actually learned a lot from uh, Sue the Collector and uh, talked to his boss about it, and he was enthralled, and that's why they stopped uh, doing the Wow. See, you better get on board, people. Yes, sir. Um, because they're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get on to our next segment. Um, I love the when we have people zoom into the show. I love it. You know, That's we have Larry the Cable Guy. And these two ladies I've known for a very long time. Uh, they're comedy store regulars, and they started their own podcast together. One of them's name is Vicki Barbalak, and the other one is Sean Polofsky, and they've got a new podcast called The Trailer Park Diaries. Who's zooming? I'll tell you who's zooming. Vicky and Sean. When I went into the kitchen for breakfast, I almost fell over. Mom was smoking a cigarette and pouring vodka into her orange juice. Ah! So we're doing. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> that is weird. And totally, it's really a going thing, guys. Oh, gosh. Okay, swear to God, you guys, we did Cheers not know Cheers to this. mom. Amazing. There's no beef jerky in their drink, though, I noticed. I'll drink to that. And here they are right now. These two wonderful people I've had the pleasure of knowing for a very long time in Los Angeles. Uh, host of the new Trailer Park Diaries, anywhere you get your podcast. Vicki Barbalak and Sean Polofsky, how are you? Oh, good to see you, John. Yeah, John. We're really happy to be here. Thank you for having us. It's good to see you too, and thanks for doing it. My pleasure. I'd like to start with how did this whole thing come about for you guys? I've known you guys for a while. Funny comedians. I've, I basically, uh, you know, we started around the same time. If you want to say yeah. at the comedy store in L.A., it's where yeah. I bump into you guys all the time. But how did this start? Uh, well, I'll, I'll let you take that. I, I just hearing John's accent, though, yeah. like your Southern, uh, I'm starting now I'm already starting to like my Oklahoma. I'm already starting to talk like this, just listening to you. So I'll let Vicky speak first so I can <laughs> gather my. Yeah, time. yeah, it yeah. is. It will. It is contagious. It is. Right. She, she has to she has to channel her inner yeah. Jewish voice to yeah. stable herself. So I'll, <laughs> and I'll, I'll take it from the trailer park here. Uh, yeah. So. So what happened was we, we you know, it was a pandemic there, something was going on. People weren't going to work. There seemed to be some sickness going around and yeah. things were like slowed down. And uh, so we said, you know, we should do a podcast during this time. And so we, we called the, those guys at All Things Comedy, Al Madrigal picked up the phone and he came up with this concept because we like, I said, I'd like it to be about, you know, my trailer world because I live in a trailer park forever. And he goes, okay. And he liked, he had this diary idea. Not diarrhea, diary, sorry. Diary <laughs> Not idea. diarrhea. Yeah. Diary. Diary idea. Diary. And, it, and, I, and so he kind of came up. I had the concept. diarrhea idea. You had diarrhea yeah, from yeah. Yeah. New Mexico. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, he came. So we, we sourced some diaries and we just, we um, we, we, we imagined that Shanika moved into my trailer park because she got a divorce. And we imagined what it'd be like if she's living in my trailer park, which is very difficult to imagine since she can't leave Beverly Hills for a second. So, and anyway, we are reading the diary and we're dialoguing and we've just been having a ball. Yeah. I mean, you know, Vicki and I, we've been best friends for a very long time since we met, like right before we became regulars at the comedy store. And we've always kind of had this dynamic because we come from very two different backgrounds and our comedy stylings are different. And we're kind of just like this modern day ab fab that comes together living in a trailer park. And we find this, trunk full of diaries and every season we read one of the diaries and then we discuss it and we decide what where we think the story is going 
Right. Oh, I absolutely love it. I um, I have some I could contribute. I don't know where the diaries come from. Is that like a real thing that we discovered? Oh, or we, we we actually source some and then we kind of jacked them up. And by the yeah. way, you all, John Reap, you guys is he introduces the show, oh, which is yeah. such an honor. That guy's voice in the very beginning of every episode is none other than John Reap. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. so cool to have the element of you introducing yeah. us. It just it brought this authenticity to it. Yeah. And it, yeah. you did, you did sound like a Sam Elliott. You I, did. I was trying to go with Sam Elliott, um, but like Kill a stuffy it. nosed Sam Elliott. I you get um, a lot of comments like, I hate the podcast, but the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, Vicky, are you actually in your trailer right now? Right now, you're looking at a double wide delight right here, Boom. all over. Wow, all it's over. beautiful in there. I like the oh, uh, the, the brightness of it all. And John, don't right. don't let her trailer fool you either. You know, Vicky has lived in in probably about what five or six trailers in this your life. Shocking four. This is my fourth. Four. This one is like this is like the Palm Springs. Yeah. Top of the it, this hill. is the upper scale trailer park. It overlooks like mountains and oceans. It's beautiful. So don't yeah. don't let yeah. her, her her success I'm looking and down fame. On a lot of people, if you know what I mean, right now. <laughs> but I'm still the same old gal. <laughs> you know what? Like I'd like to get the history of both of you a little bit too. Like, how did you even get into show business? Where did it all start from you? Well, uh, I, for me personally, I just you know. I mean, coming from a family, everybody, my family was funny, but I always just had a thing for performing. And as a kid, I loved to do impersonations and impressions, and I loved Saturday Night Live. And that was kind of really where I was, I thought my path would would head to towards. And I just always performed in school plays and comedy, uh, humorous duet competitions, and that's kind of where the performance part of me took over. And then I went off to LA after high school and went to USC and then studied uh, at the School of Theater. So I always was performing as a kid and always performing comedy. Yeah. Now, how did the stand up part start? Did you start that at the store or somewhere else? Uh, I took a class. I took Judy Carter's stand-up class yeah. like back in the day <laughs> when there were dinosaurs roaming. But you can't tell because I've had Botox and a photo facial. Looking <laughs> you look good, great. Sean. You look absolutely uh, beautiful. I'm telling you. Thank you. Like I told you, John, I'm drinking baby's blood and ah, it's working. That's the secret. Um, that's what they do in I, Beverly Hills, rest of the world. They drink yes. baby's blood. That's what we <laughs> do. But it's we do. We go to actually, <laughs> when we go to Whole Foods, we're just, we, you think we're ordering <laughs> kale, but it's really baby's blood. Um, but yeah, no, I took a stand up class with Judy Carter, kind of right out of college, because it was just something I thought I'd try. And then I did it, and I would do it like maybe a couple times a year, and I'd be like, I'm a stand up. But I really wasn't. And I was still involved in sketch comedy because I was part of Acme Comic Theater right after college. And so that's, you know, and then when I realized I was always on stage with other people and I needed a kind of a better showcase for myself, something a little more solo, I started doing stand up more. And then, you know, when you do like open mics and you book like private rooms with other people, and then I got a showcase at the store and then the rest is history. Yeah. Vicki, what about you? How did it start for you? So I was like, I was like, for almost 40 and I, I i was like i was a fat kid and i always made jokes for defense and uh, i worked for my parents carpet store for 20 years back in the day before yelp and you could treat customers how you wanted but uh i just <laughs> was you know not really happy selling carpet uh shocking but i just took this comedy class just as a lark and i i, I loved it so much and i just in a few years i just told my parents sell the shop i i don't want it get re you retire and take the money and then i moved into a trailer with my daughters and that was it and then mitzi saw me right after that or right around that same time and uh and i think also for me it was like 99 to 2000 end of 99 or something anyway i just loved it and i kept doing it and uh and i i came out of san diego area though so there was so much more rooms and availability and i would just go up to the comedy store or a few rooms in la but it was great to develop here in san diego You've got four, no, five episodes right now of yeah, of five this week will oh, be yeah. yeah, okay, five's out. There's and twelve this twelve episodes in this season, and then uh, and then uh, 
the next uh, season will start and it's going to be a, a, a real nasty diary. Like, like a erotic. Fifty Shades of Grey. Ooh. So it's a trailer park gray. <laughs> well, you know, if you guys need me to do more than just a voiceover, if you need you know, like a, we do, John. a good looking body, if you're going to go to that's, video, you know, that's what we're talking about. We're going to video and we, we do need you. And if you don't mind, if you don't mind some leather. Oh, sure. John, be careful what you right. ask for. Be <laughs> <No>. careful. <laughs> Sean, you want to hear a funny story that involves me and you? Yes. Okay. So not long ago, probably three, four years ago. And I, by the way, I don't want you to feel bad about this because I've done the same thing to many people over the course of my life. We were hanging out at the comedy store and you introduced me to someone. I, I forgot who it was, but we we're just hanging out. And we're talking. And you said, oh, my God, this guy's very funny. This is John Huck. You called me John Huck by accident. Oh who was God. another? He's another comedian with an orange beard. I called you John Huck. That was just a bad for. I know who you are. I know. So I know. But what's funny is, like, I didn't want to embarrass you by calling you out in front of your friend. And I went like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just went with it. And then it happened three more times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I never, because I allowed it the first time, I felt like I can't correct her because we're too far in. <laughs> I'm so, I feel so bad. And that's funny because I saw a John Hook the other day and I introduced him as John Reed. Oh, they, so, so they uh, were even. It's even. <laughs> I did the I same apologize. thing. No, no, I don't feel bad. I did the same thing. Uh, who was it? It was Chris Porter. And um, yeah, Chris Porter walks up to me and we're all hanging out. That's at the comedy store. I've been drinking a little bit. And Chris Porter walks over and I looked at him and I went, Josh, like that. <laughs> and he goes, you just call me Josh. I go, oh, right. Chris, like that. And I just, yes. I felt this big. And I, and I felt like he hated me for like a year. And then we had him on the podcast. He goes, I don't even remember that. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's, That's so hilarious. embarrassing when you do that. You know, usually I've got it together and I probably was just, like, I didn't even realize no, that. No, no, I, I looked that, like John Huck. I can catch myself. We, but... We're both funny dudes with strawberry blonde hair and beards. So I get it. It was, it was hilarious. Um, I get called, I, you know, there's people that they come up to me all the time and they've had, you know, maybe like a seven minute conversation with me, <laughs> comics. Mm -hmm. And um, they either think I'm Sharon Houston or Shayma Tosh. Oh, and they're like, oh, right. oh, that's good talking to you, Sharon. And I'm like, uh, I'm Sean. And then they're like, you're not Sharon Houston. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> I'm always, and kidding. I love her. Yeah. And you know what yeah. I mean? But it's like, but it, it is weird. Like people don't even know that they aren't talking. Do to you let person. it? At least see, I knew you were John Reed. Yes. At some point you, how long do you let it go? Right. That's the thing. Um, Vicky, has that ever happened to you or someone? I'm always, you I'm always getting Chelsea Handler. Are you Chelsea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't, I'm sick of it. Where, where else can people find you? I know you're all over the interwebs. Yeah. Um, I, go ahead, Vicky. I'm in the phone book. I'm in the phone book. Most of the <laughs> local phone books. I put my, I have an ad in most phone books. You and, get Wi-Fi out there at the trailer park. We go, and, and Rancho Calavero trailer park. You can find me here most, most all the time when I'm not on the road and I'll, on uh, the internet. You have a website though, don't you? Yeah. Vicky Barbalak. And I, I'm on Twitter and tweet and twat and all that, you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can you can find me at the nearest temple or you can <laughs> find me at uh, ha ha chick h a h a c h i c k dot com and at Sean Polofsky on on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, what wherever, yeah, yeah. wherever the goods are. Yeah, we got to we got to um, do a TikTok uh, dance together or something. Oh, yeah. Well, good, because I'm fun. so good at dancing. I think that'll be a good idea. I would Perfect. love to see it. I would love to. Well, we'll get ready for the Fifty Shades of Grey Trailer Park uh, Diary edition. All right. I'm glad you're at the gym because you're going to look <laughs> good in those chaps. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you guys so much. And uh, you, we'll John talk Reed. to you again soon. Thank, Thank you, you, John Huck. We appreciate it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> All right. Trailer Park Diaries. Check it out. I'm in it. So uh, I love those two. All right. You know, I also do another podcast. Mark knows because he's a big fan. He's wearing the shirt. Look yeah, at everybody this. get a look at this. Hereford and Reap t-shirt. I got that just for you, buddy. Biggest fan. Let's do this right here. <laughs>
<laughs> wow. Well, you can check out Heffern and Reap every Monday night live at 7.30. And uh, we got to, we're starting to do this thing where we talk about promo codes. We're obsessed with promo codes. So uh, we, we have this lady on who makes, she started her own hot side hustle. She makes bags out of plastic bags and uh, makes them into purses. And uh, anyway, we got to talking to her. And check out this little clip I have from the reap. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, we just came across something. Now, if you watch the Heffern Reap show, you Woo! don't see this all the time. You oh. know, when we bring up something like this, it's going to go fast. This week, it's hooked by Charlene. <laughs> oh, it's look hooked, by Charlene. It's hooked by Charlene. Now, some of you people are like, I got a handbag, and you wear those handbags, and they're just, you don't even know if you got a real one because there's a lot of handbags that are cheats out there, John Reap. You know, they're cheats. They're not A lot of Reap, lot a knockoff ba- fake plastic yes. handbags. This is certified 100% plastic, reusable, recycled. We just had Earth Day. Hello, do you love your planet? You got to love your planet. You're going to get hooked on by Charlene with these bags, baby. What's up about these bags? You, you walk into a, a party. Maybe, maybe your kid ha, has a soccer game. You don't want to be the, the mom or dad or, or whatever pronoun you go by. You don't want to be one there just sitting there with a handbag that nobody talks about. <laughs> you want to be the person we go, excuse me, your, your kid played a good game, but one quick question. Where'd you get that bag? Where'd you get the? I'll tell you where you got the bag. Hooked by Charlene on Etsy. And if you buy <laughs> one right now, use the promo code Heffern and Reap and save yourself 10% off any product by Hooked by Charlene right now at Etsy.com. Go ahead. <laughs> Wow, Heffern and Reap every Monday night at 7.30. Go to heffernandreap.com. Check out the whole dang episode. All right, I've got money to give away. So uh, let's move on to the next segment. Don't forget at the end, great small town news story about a lady falling in an outhouse. You're going to want to hear that. But first, you know, I've done some acting in my day. I've been in some movies sitcoms commercials you know all this and i get paid for it every now and then in the mail they're called residual checks i thought i'd make a game out of it so what we're going to do my friend mark here how many checks you, you reckon's in that pile uh, i'm gonna guess about 10 11 but 10 or 11 different checks here i don't know how much is in there mark's gonna pick one at random i'm gonna open it up i'm gonna tell you what it's for how it's airing you call in with a guess there might be a phone number down here if there is, start a calling it because we're going to take three people at random. Closest person to the actual amount, I'll have my intern send you this check in the mail. I'll endorse it, get it to you in the mail. It will be yours. It is a game that we like, we like to, to call. call. How much is that screen actor? We did too much of that. Good times. That's one of my favorite things that you do on the show, Marcus. That's why I I like singing with you. Pick pick one at random, slide it over. I don't know what's going on in here. Let's see what we got. I'm going to open it where you can't see it. And we're going to do some in house guessing. Come on, big money. So he's going to guess, and my interns are going to guess. They're not going to win, but it'll let you know how you should be guessing. It gauge your guess on their guess. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a little clue. You usually give it away. Pretty mm. close. Okay. It's, We're getting a run of these. A lot of he's bounding down. That's right. Yeah. A lot of people he's love He's bounding it. down on HBO. That's the poster right behind you. I was in the last season. This is Chapter 25. It's just for electronic sell-through, whatever that means. Marcus, how much is this check? $7.74. Okay, that's not a bad guess. Not a bad guess, but not close. You're in the ballpark. Good guess. Okay. Let's go to have a ball. I'm going to go with 6.92. 6.92. We're getting closer. Elliot. 
Four dollars seventy six cents. Ooh, four dollars and seventy six cents. I'm not sure which one of you is closer because I don't do math. Yeah, we'll have to get the algorithm cruncher in there. But anyway, you know the ballpark. You should be guessing in. What we're going to do now is open the phone lines. We're going to get three of you up in here, get to know you, and uh, someone's going to win this check. You know what I'm saying? So the Alan Jackson, whenever you're ready, you just let somebody on in the showroom here. All right, they're in. Hey. John Reap here. Who am I talking to? Roger LaFerrier. Roger. Uh, and his dogs. How many you got? How many dogs you got, Roger? I have four. Wow. Did you say your name was Roger? Yes, sir. All right. Where are you calling in from, buddy? Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, Nashville, Tennessee. One of my favorite cities in America. Uh, dare I say it's my favorite. You were there. Did you have a good time? That's pretty dang fun. Yeah. yeah. What do you do out there, Roger, in Nashville? I work for Pepsi. Oh, you work for Pepsi. Mm. Sundrop. How, yes, do that, how does that relate to Sundrop, the Alan Jackson? Is that in the same family? I don't know if it is. I, I don't think so. I think that's I a Coke. Coke. company. No. Okay. Well, Pepsi is the pride of the Carolinas. Remember that? That's what it was. Did they say they were... Born, born in the Carolinas. Born in the Carolinas. Born in the Carolinas. Okay. Yeah. What do you do for Pepsi, Roger? I'm a sales rep. Okay. Can you get us some free Pepsi? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I can't even get free Pepsi. Ah, <laughs> that's fine. Bummer. Maybe I'll hook you up with some Sundrop one of these days. You ever have Sundrop? Yeah. Mm, and it's your not, favorite. Not Let's leave it there. <laughs> no more talking. Yeah, he All wasn't right. so sure, was he? I know. All right, buddy. Uh, so you're calling in from Nashville. Your name is Roger. You got four dogs. You work for Pepsi. How'd you hear about this podcast, buddy? Oh, I'm a, I'm a um, supporter. Oh, yes. Uh, tell me your last name again because it was mumbled and there was dogs barking behind it. Laferia. Laferia. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who you are now. I never pronounce your name correctly, do I? No. <laughs> That's why nobody I really say it knows. like, like uh, Roger Laferia. Uh, very good, buddy. All right. How much, Roger, is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? $3.76. $3.76. Did I hear a slight Isaiah impression in there? <laughs> I thought when he said dollars, he was doing his little oh, tip of the cap. $3. Dollars. Yeah. All right, put him on hold, the Alan Jackson. Not a bad guess, but it's, it's not exactly right. But as always, first guess, he's winning right now. Yes because no one else has called in yet. But they're in the room right now. John Reap, who am I talking to? This is Mike. Mike. How's it going, buddy? I'm John. How Good, you doing? brother. How are you? Look at this. How are you Friday night in Tulsa? Love the show. Oh, Mike from Tulsa. So which show were you at? Were you at the show where I had to kick a guy out? <gasps> what? No, I was at the late show. No one got kicked out on the late one. Friday night or Saturday night? Friday night, yeah, brother. Yeah, Saturday night I had to kick a dude out. You had to kick one out. Well, I had You had to have your people had kick him one out. out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. He wouldn't shut Your day. Huh? Oh, he's talking to somebody else. Oh. Mike, you saw me in Tulsa. Yeah. Thanks for coming out. You had a good time, right? Absolute blast. Dude, thank you. And this is the podcast I was talking about. And now you're here. I talked about this game. You did talk about us. Good. Yes, yes. Um, and what do you do, Mike, in Tulsa? I'm a warehouse manager. Warehouse manager in Tulsa. His name is Mike. Did you ever see Eastbound and Down on HBO? Saw Eastbound and Down, yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, I was in the last season. I'm wondering, Mike. Oh, I love the name Mike, by the way, because my name is John. Michael. And every club needs a Mike and a John. Ah, microphone, microphone bathroom. Place to pee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's us, buddy. We got the bases covered. All right, Mike, how much is this Screen Actors Guild residual check? Let me go with four eighty seven. Four dollars 
87 cents. Not a bad guess. I think it sounds like he's at work and he's trying to sneak a phone call in. He's on the night shift. No, not at work. Not at work. <laughs> okay, it's all good. I don't care. You're safe with me, buddy. All right, the Allen Jackson. No. Thanks, Mike. Put him on hold. Uh, we got one more caller, and we're going to find out who's the closest. Someone's going to win my money. I can't wait to find out who it might be. John Reap here. Who am I talking to? David Rottweiler. David, David Rottweiler. Rottweiler. Wow. Roop, 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 roop. I know. We've got a lot of very dog-oriented show because wow. there's dogs barking with Roger. I feel like Mike may have whispered to a dog halfway into it. Remember, he says, roop, roop. <laughs> Yeah. I and then now we've got a guy named Rottweiler. Rottweiler. So it's spelled just like the dog. Just like the dog. Last name is different in real life, but I met John in the High Point at his show recently. Yes. And uh, – Anyway, it was a great show. Calling in the guests on the residual check. I love it, sir. Thank you for calling in. I'm hoping you're enjoying this podcast. What do you do for a living, buddy? I do uh, IT, IT work uh, for a major uh, gene manufacturer. Blue gene or like gene therapy? Like blue gene. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if you're doing like, you know, sort of chromosomes, that kind of stuff. No, not quite that smart, buddy. Just, what, just work on computers and not a scientist. Well, what, <laughs> <laughs> nah. what kind of blue jeans, man? True religions, Levi's, Wranglers, all kinds? Well, go with your third choice. All yeah. kinds. Oh, no, sir. Wranglers. Starts right. with a W, ends with an R. I, I don't know what is privy and allowed. I'm a contractor, but it's, it's Wrangler, Wrangler and Lee. We'll leave it at that. All right, buddy. How much is this residual check? I'm gonna guess five twenty-seven. Ooh, five dollars. Your eyeballs got big. Seven cents. Well, you know, as always, I don't, I don't do math. I have a, a degree from a state college. You know, dude, I didn't what, go to Carolina. I went to NC State. What kind of cool name is Rottweiler? I didn't even, I didn't even go to college. That's a pretty cool name. <laughs> that is a really cool name. Yeah, Rottweiler's cool. Like, if I could change my last name, it would be something badass like yeah. that. It's Rottweiler, like I don't want to mess with that dude. Pincher, you know. <laughs> Just by the last name, I don't want to mess with him. Yeah. Do you have? Do you happen to have a Rottweiler? That'd be interesting. I do. I have. Uh, I have uh, cool. several rescue Rottweilers. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we have given the check to my intern. He's given it to the Alan Jackson. He's putting it in the mainframe. The <laughs> algorithm machine is crunching. Then, oh, and they're back. That was fast. Wow. We have the fastest computer right here in Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, the Allen Jackson, you have figured out a winner, and whenever you're ready, you can just let him on in the showroom, and we'll talk to him and congratulate him. All right, well, I'm just going to leave our last it's contestant in the room because he's oh, our winner. Mr. Oh, Rottweiler. Right. Wow, look at that. You won, buddy. All right, thank you all. Your guess was for $5 and... 27 cents. 27 cents. The actual amount Retail of price the check is five dollars and sixty three cents. My finger is right next to the amount, so everybody at home can see. I'm not making this crap up, and we are going to send this to you in the mail, my friend. But we have one question for you. What are you going to do with all that cash? cash? Uh, might buy me a can of snuff. Hey, hey that'll get know. it. That'll I get like it. this Rottweiler guy, man. What kind of snuff? You, what kind of dip you did, Rottweiler? Uh, skull peach long cut. I'm a Ooh. skull extra wintergreen long cut guy. Oh, you guys have no, not worked up. I used up. to dip the original. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not into the flavors too much. But, you, ever, uh, you ever dabble in hawking? <laughs> That's candy. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I was, uh, I've been chewing tobacco off and on since I was three years old, so yes. Yeah. He I, said, I have dabbled with Hawkins. He said three years old. I know. What about Gold River? I remember that one, too. I've had that little sweet. Yep. Gold River was the one I started on as a kid. Mom thought it was candy, too. Last one, Longhorn for your, <laughs> uh, for your budgeting needs. Yes, Longhorn. Longhorn. You got to have some Longhorn in the mix. Oh, yeah. yeah. But see, he has not worked up to our friend Kent level where it's fine cut. Fine cut. Copenhagen, yeah. fine cut. No, I can't. I just don't like it. Uh, too that messy. rough flavor. I got to have a little bit of a something. It's too so. messy. It gets yeah. all up in your teeth. And then but you anyway, can't smile at nobody. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Wattweiler. <laughs> what you need to do now is go to countryish.com, click on the contact section, send 
an email to us through the website. Give us your address, the amount of the check, and we will send it to you in the mail ASAP. Okay, buddy? Sounds good. Thank you all very much. See you, all buddy. Have a great Thank you, you Mr. Rod Weiler, and everybody for playing the Spin Actors Guild residual check game. Remember, if you want to keep the game going, if you want to make sure that I'm always going to have checks to give out to the to you guys, stream anything I'm in, baby. I would start with Into the Storm. That's a big movie. The poster's behind me, Into the Storm. You know, it's storm It's storm season right now. It April is, showers bring me flowers. Weather. It's tornado It's tornado time. Season, yeah. Get into it. Watch Into the Storm. Watch Rodney's sitcom. Watch Eastbound and Down, Harold and Kumar, Escape Guantanamo Bay, anything. Let's keep the game going. All right. It's time for our final segment. Oh, I'm so excited about this one, buddy. You know, and also, I just want you to know, we do this for John Boy and Billy as well. Shout out to John Boy and Billy. That was my favorite radio show growing up as a kid. I used yep. to listen to them on the way to high school. High school, yep, way to school. And now they have graciously allowed me to be a part of their show. Full circle. That's right. So every Friday night, this, oh, Friday morning, this segment ends up on their show as yep. well. So shout out John Boy and Billy. Well, I got a real stinker for you today. Real stinker. A woman. Oh, sorry. Tell us what it's about, Justin Clyde Williams. Small town news. They're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All right, buddy. Check this headline out, my friend. A woman had to be rescued after falling into an outhouse toilet trying to retrieve her phone. <laughs> well. She dropped her phone and a deuce at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> this happened in Quill Scene, Washington. The woman was uh, at the top of Mount Walker in the Olympic National Forest when she went to the bathroom and was using the throne and her phone when it fell in the toilet. Does this ever happen to you? You ever drop your phone in the toilet? No, I have not. Not ever dropped my phone in the toilet. Yeah, you're no. pretty pretty lucky then. I, no, I always put it, what I do with my phone when I'm using yeah. it is I'll put it under my chin, like that right there. And pee. <laughs> really? Yeah, I do. You don't put it in your pocket. If you, or if you put it in your pocket and you undo your pants, it weighs you down. Like if you got yeah. shorts on, <laughs> yes. your, your pants right. will fall down to your ankles right. like right. a little right. like a little boy. So I always take mine and put it under my chin and pee like that. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm going to try that. Or well, under the arm. I'll do under the arm, under the too, arm. to secure I, it. I will leave it in my pocket mostly, <clears> but <throat> there are times when I'm at home in my bathroom, if I'm peeing, you know. I, I, I've got to where I can't even go number two without it. Me either. That's a wasted. I have to have I get it. mad if it's like, if I have to, if it's an emergency two, yeah. and I'm running to the bathroom and I don't have it, I go like, You'll go away what across am I going to do with myself? For, no, I will just sit there in misery. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I have Alexa. Shut up. <laughs> uh, she, she talks to me from time to time. But when I'm peeing, I, will, I got a little towel rack and above the toilet. I just put it right Set there. Set it right there. Just watch stuff while I'm while peeing. While you're peeing. You're peeing that long. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, this is why you should have a backup phone, everybody. You know what I'm talking about? Burner phone? Yeah, like a number two phone? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, here's what happened. And I got this straight from this uh, the Hickory Daily Records right here. This was out of the... Their uh, newspaper. Um, well, here's what happened. Um, first, she had to disassemble the toilet seat, which I'm sure she hated because every female <laughs> hates to raise the damn toilet lid. Uh -huh. You know, they hate that stuff. Uh, I don't know how she did it. I guess she had tools with her. I don't know. But she disassembled the toilet seat. And then she used dog leashes to try and get at it. Uh. Dig around for it. <laughs> I don't know. You make a lasso or something? I don't know how she did it with a uh, trying to rope a baby cow. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she said, "Hey Siri, grab the rope, <laughs> save yourself." <laughs> Little Miss MacGyver down there, like Leonardo DiCaprio. Did you ever see Catch Me If You Can? Remember when he escaped through the toilet in the plane? Yes. <laughs> yes. This is Catch Me in the Can. Uh, then she used. <laughs> The dog leashes 
to try and get it. But then when that didn't work, she eventually used the leashes to tie herself off and lowered herself down to reach for it. Good Lord. Like Mission Impossible Tom Cruise style. Uh, meanwhile, the dogs are running off, you know, no leashes. Well, that effort failed, and then she fell into the toilet headfirst. Oh, God. Headfirst into the head. I hope she had time to shut her mouth. That's horrible. You think waterboarding's bad? Try it with sewage water. <laughs> We're floating in there. I'd rather drown to death. Uh, the woman by, was by herself, and she tried to get out on her own for about 15 minutes. So she's either a really short person or this is like one of those big military style latrines. Not like a, not the porta potty one seater. Yeah, it's like a whale, like a water yeah, whale. Yeah, this is like That's a deep. big one. Yeah. So she fell into that and couldn't get out. But she did find her phone and she called 911 on the phone. Yeah. While she in was, the, while she yeah. was in the, <laughs> right. Wow. 911, watch your emergency. Uh, yeah, I'm, some, I'm in some real shit here. <laughs> Uh, Can you smell me now? <laughs> I can't believe the phone still worked after all that, you know? Don't you have to put it in rice or something? Yeah, dry it out. Yeah? Yeah. How was she able to eat Brown it? rice? <laughs> well, the fire department... Brown rice. I just took... That's it was fine. I'll wait for you. Yeah, the fire sorry. department came, and the first thing they did was light a match. Now, that's not true. That would have blown up because of the methane. Uh, they gave her some blocks to stand on so she could actually reach the harness. So that's how, I guess she was shorter. That's how deep it was. I guess they gave her cinder blocks. Yeah. You know, I guess that's better than dropping a log. <laughs> Throw down my squatty potty. <laughs> then they pulled her up with the harness through the hole and out of the vault, like Andy Dufresne from Shawshank Redemption. Yes. I mean, that's, or, or did you ever see Raising Arizona? I did. Remember when John Goodman came out of that hole in the ground covered in mud? I bet it looked like that. Either way, it's nasty. Do you yeah. imagine, dude? It's well, no, you're not, and she's not anywhere near a shower. She's in the middle of nowhere in a mountain right. top. She's the new Lord of the Flies. Jeez, I bet she had some. Well, the fire department, speaking of that, they hosed her down and strongly encouraged her to seek medical attention after being exposed to all the human waste. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, turn that thing on me full blast. Throw in some bleach and vinegar and tomato juice while you're at How many diseases... Do you think she got from that? I mean, what diseases would you get? Hepatitis A, B, C, and D. All the hepatitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hepatitis E. coli, all of it, man. The whole alphabet. Well, the fire chief said, I've been doing this job for 40 years, and that was the first. And to add insult to injury, the police showed up and wrote her a ticket for not having her dogs on a leash. Well, that part I made up, that's a joke, but that would be some shit, wouldn't it? They also found in there Hunter Biden's laptop. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, that's where it was. <laughs> there you go, everybody. That's a good one. Quill scene Washington. The town may be small, but, but the news, news is huge. huge. And shout out to the Hickory Daily Records for that amazing story. Yeah. I'm going to keep going back to them for that. I saw Hickory Daily Records had a Sue, the debt collector. I see there. that. Is that? Uh, Look at that. Wow. I wonder if he got to him. That's us, right? Yeah, that's, that's Hickory Daily Records for y'all, about y'all every now and then. Why Hank? Why did Hank guess annex his house? Current mayor of Hickory, Jerry Mandring? Oh, wow. What is the Hickory Daily Records <laughs> doing? <laughs> That's amazing. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Pick the All right, record. look, I'm going to say it one time, and one time only. A, a, a couple of episodes back when I was running for mayor, I told you I'm going to start a new, a new, my own newspaper. Yeah, and you just did. This is what it is. I like it. Now, I will never, ever, ever own up to this again. This is going to be my national lampoon of Hickory, my spoof newspaper. And we're going to make it look like it looks just it's like coming it. straight out of, because I named it Hickory Daily Records. See, I didn't catch with that. With the S. So you, so you actually got me. Thank so, you. You did get me. Right. Until I saw the Sue the Collector. Right. And I started putting things together. Yeah. yeah. And I, was, yeah. I get it now. Yeah, there's a guy. But who's, you got me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the idea. So now that you're in on the joke, just let the joke ride. Don't spoil it for other people. Try to trick them. Let's have fun with this, all right? You're a bumpkin. We're all friends here. 
don't don't ruin the joke. That's hilarious. All right. All good right. job. Very good. Any final thoughts? Let me go around the room. Mark, anything you want to say at the end? Not here? at the moment. Not at anything of interest. Did you have a good though. time today? I did. I did. I appreciate you having me out. We'll see um, you in two weeks. The shirt looks good on you. Yeah, thank you. John Heffern, appreciate you. And I got a shirt out of the deal today. That's right. Uh, Mark, have a ball. Any last-minute comments? As for you, you're stuck. 750 stars. <laughs> so, courtesy of Sue the Collector, yeah. this share stares on. That's Jared, right? Jared, yes, sir. So, Jared, uh, also, I'm going to have him on Heffern and Reap Monday. So you got you all gonna get, get get to meet him. Sue the collector. Sue guy. the collector. So um, do I do it now? Yeah, I might as well do it now. Look, I said <laughs> yeah, you if said we get it. to six hundred, I would do the share stare. But we got over six hundred. How much did we actually get? Seven hundred and fifty at my last count. Seven hundred and fifty. Well, you know what this means? This means next week is gonna be a thousand stars because I don't <laughs> like doing this. Um, but hopefully. By me doing this, you'll hit the dang share button. So what you're about to see is I put on a share wig. I stare right at the camera. I do the share stare to remind you to share as I sing a share song. Let's get in to it. Huh? <laughs> Here we go. Hey. Do you believe in sharing the love? How? I can feel something on top of my head. It's a dumb wig, cause it's not enough. Wow! Thank you, Jared. To the collector, everybody. Gave them their money's worth. Thank you, John. Yep, that's it. All right. Uh, Elliot. Yes, sir. Eddie Final Weber. thoughts. Right, sir. Eddie Weber's girl, Stephanie Hayes, has a birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday. Happy to her. birthday. A lot of Stephanie. people are asking me, too. It's been a while. Uh, a is there, is there, are there any funeral arrangements with you and Linda? Is there anything going on that people are asking, where do we send flowers? I haven't heard anything in a minute. Right. Well, believe it or not, I still don't have the autopsy results. And really? Said, yes, sir. I Even after all this time. so long. Well, they said because of, of COVID, they have half the staff and double the number of cases. So. Wow. And since it's not an emergency, it's not. Well, I, did, I, I don't want to keep bothering you about it. But well, no. People I want to, you know, let, let, keep us informed. Oh, I certainly will. As soon as I know, you'll know. Okay. All yes, right. Good deal. Uh, the Ellen Jackson. Anything you want to add? Oh, oh. There's more Elliot. Oh, yeah, oh. yes. Well, also, I do. I, I do know someone who has uh, really good uh, tickets to the Journey concert this Thursday night. There you go. Ninth Row Center, and uh, they're they're uh, willing to sell them. They're they're going for like eleven hundred dollars, but they'll sell them for much cheaper than that. So direct message me if you're interested. Direct message. Elliot, yes, you want journey tickets for Thursday night. At the Spectrum Center in Charlotte. And they're going for 1100 two, two. But you two can tickets. get them for how much? Uh, 500 apiece. <laughs> hey, there you go. Half yes. off. Huh? More than that? half off, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I had a good time. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Go to countryish.com. Become a supporter. Tell the world we're trying to grow, and we appreciate all of you for watching and sharing and for the Alan Jackson, for Elliot the intern, for intern Mark, Sergeant Mark, have a ball. For Mark Hunt, my name is John Reap, and I wish you a bicycle. Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't shoot a bike and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm countryish. Well, a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smart forms and yourself park cars. Thank God I'm countryish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for countryish. Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. 
And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on support and thank you. show up look that's me clapping uh hit the share button thank you once again come see uh the staff the country-ish bumpkin crew this weekend at the hickory expo center are we done we just went away at the hickory expo center can of business everybody get a t-shirt get a hat get a hot sauce